You're on mute, Karen. Uh, and I'm can I ask PowerPoint. a question before we start? Okay, hang Go on. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah. Go ahead with your question, sir. Is it a uh, children foster care or adult foster care this training? It's children foster care. Okay, I'm sorry, so I'm in wrong place. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, hello? Yes? Um, did you guys like uh, take attendance? Because I had called in earlier. I was, I, I patched in, but I kept saying hello and I couldn't hear anybody. That's why I videoed in. Okay, who's this? Uh, my name is Shaquilla Span. Okay, I have you, I'll mark you down, okay? Yes, I have okay. you down. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So good evening, everyone. Like Tally stated, this is Ramsey County's Child Foster Care Traditional Orientation. Again, my name is Karen Franklin. I'm one of the licensors in the unit. A little bit about myself is that I have over 20 years of experience, both in foster care and adoption. This is my lovely co-facilitator, Ms. Relda Brown. Hello, I'm Relda Brown. I have 21 years in child protection and nine years in child foster care. And just so you know, Ms. Tally is our both Relda and I supervisor. So we just want to welcome our supervisor to the orientation as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Do you have it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I do this every time. So this evening, we're going to talk about the purpose of this orientation. Tonight, we'll review the philosophy of foster care, the foundation and procedures. And yes, there are rules and regulations to foster care. We'll help you decide tonight if foster care is good for you and your family. And if you're interested, um, we will forward you the application so that you're able to complete that and um, forward it to us. Uh, this traditional orientation is one of the requirements of the licensing process. Okay, I'm going. And so the agenda tonight will discuss also the changes uh, and adjustments you can expect. This is a family affair, so not only will you be going through this process, but your entire family, especially if you have biological children of your own. We'll discuss how placement happens, what are the procedures, what are the decisions. We'll talk about um, foster care and self-care. Uh, this work is um, rewarding, but it's also uh, time consuming. So we want to make sure that you're um, taking care of yourself as well as taking care of the children that you may have in your home. Rhoda, we'll start. We're going to start with the definition of foster care. And the real definition of foster care is keeping the children safe while the biological family works out what brought them into child protection. The goals are always going to be that the child or children be reunited with their biological family. And for that reason, it is so very important for the child to have regular contact with the biological family. Studies have shown that if there is regular contact with the biological family, there's a greater chance that reunification will happen. Um, the other piece is that we want to have permanency quickly if a child cannot return home. And we will talk about the permanency guidelines later on in the slide. Why do children need placement? Like, we, like I mentioned before, safety is the number one priority. 
your job is to provide a safe, stable environment for the child. Most of the children that come in, come in because of substantiated abuse and neglect. This is substantiated through a child protection investigation. And the majority of the children are going to come because they've experienced abuse or neglect in their biological home. And others may come in because of their special needs. Some children come directly from the birth home into foster care. Others are placed in a shelter and a shelter can only hold a child for 30 days and then they go into foster care. Many times in child protection, a report will come in about a baby being born with drugs in their system. Um, that is an automatic investigation. And numerous times, if it is substantiated, the child will go straight into shelter or into foster placement. How placement happens. We talked about substantiated abuse or neglect. We have child protection screeners like every county and their job is to screen in or screen out all allegations that come through to them. It's going to be an allegation that comes over the phone. It could be an email, it could be a scan, it could be a text, but it is the screener's job to either say the case meets criteria for an investigation or it doesn't. What happens when they substantiate abuse and neglect, they appoint a child protection workout, worker to come out and meet with the family. That worker is going to come out and they're going to complete a case plan with the biological parents. In that case plan, there's going to be specific goals that talk about what the biological parent needs to do in order for the child to be returned to them. An example is if the child came in because parents had a drug abuse problem, it would be for them to get themselves into treatment, to remain drug free, mm -hmm. to find stable housing. Mm -hmm. um, the specific plans are going to also, depending on the circumstances, have goals for the children. And these children, are going to be facing a timeline, which we'll talk about later, on when these goals are going to be uh, completed. They make decisions about the placement of children and services for the family. And when I talk about that, I'm going to talk about the child protection worker who drives the bus on this, because they will make the decision as far as the biological parents are concerned. The child foster care goal is to assess the child's needs and stabilization. As always, we're gonna start with the goal of reunification of children with parents. The three options for permanency is going to be either adoption, and that is when the parental rights are terminated. Transfer of legal and physical custody. And that is when custody is transferred to someone until the child reaches the age of 18. When we look at the permanency options, we always look at relatives first. Um, family always comes first. We have two kinship workers and the kinship workers at Ramsey County's job is to talk to the biological parent to come up with possible relatives 
where the child may go. Does anybody know why we would want to do that initially? Well, they can still be with their family? Correct. Like I said, um, that is the child's identity. So we would want to keep that child with the family. It's also someone that child is familiar with. The Can next I, would, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say too, Ramsey County um, has a rate of about 85% of our homes, even clo closer to 90% of our homes are with family. Most counties are around 50% family foster care homes and the 50% traditional. So in Ramsey County, like I said, we do a pretty good job of keeping families to children with their families. However, there's times where there's just nobody, there is no family to take these children. And that's where we look for traditional homes like the orientation that you're at today. Thank the you. next thing after family would be kin, and that could be a neighbor, it could be a teacher, it could be a coach, or just a friend of the family that the child actually knows. And then depending on the circumstances, the foster parent would be considered. Permanency in child protection cases are to be achieved no later than 12 months from the first out of home placement. So years ago, the legislature said that too many children were languishing in foster care. So they wanted to put in place some timelines so that everybody could achieve permanency as soon as possible. Once the child is involved with Ramsey County, who has temporary legal custody of the child, the placing worker, the child protection worker, must go back to court every 90 days and give a written report to the court as to how well the biological parent, biological families are doing. Uh, same with the guardian at litem that will be appointed at the court hearing. <clears throat> this gives the agency and the parent an opportunity to demonstrate that they are attempting to make progress on the case. When we talk about child protection reports, we're going to look at some of the 2018, 2014 to 2018 reports. Yes, those are in the thousands. And that's how many calls and screen-ins come through Ramsey County itself. The red is what they screened out. The blue is what is screened in. And you can see they're almost even. Next slide. Um, children in placement. Our last statistics, and we should try and get the 2019 ones, are looking at 1,038 children in placement. So we have a number of children in placement. And this is compared to the density of population in our county. Ramsey County's greatest needs, of course, is going to be teens. We've seen a lot of staffing requests for teens that come through. Um, it has been almost a constant, I would say, for the past year. Some of them come with behavior problems. Some of them come in simply because of circumstances. The next highest is going to be the sibling groups. We also have children that come in with sibling groups of three, four, five. We realize it's very hard to find placement for this kind, this large sibling group, and we really do not like to split them up, but sometimes we don't have a choice because we don't have people that can actually take in 
such a large sibling group. We also have a need for foster care providers who will work with children with mental health issues. This is one of the bigger categories that we've seen coming up. Concurrent homes for children. Concurrent means that the permanency track for children runs concurrently to reunifying with the family, biological family, or finding a home that is willing to be the permanent home for these children if they cannot return to their families. And the phrase that we like to quote is, we work diligently to recruit homes that reflect the ethnicity and culture of the children we serve because we live in a very diverse county. Take it away, Karen. You're on mute. I got it, I got it. <laughs> All righty, let's talk about the process. You all have heard a lot from Relda and you're anxious to get started. And so the licensing process takes up to three to four months and that's basically going to be driven by you, um, how quickly you can complete the process. Please keep in mind that being licensed doesn't guarantee placement. So you can receive your license and be waiting six months or so before you receive a placement. Um, you may get frustrated during this time frame, but just keep in mind that placements are all about the match. We look for homes for children in need and not children for homes in need. So we'll talk about later through this um, presentation how matches occur. It may be best to wait to become a foster parent if you have recently married or divorced, if you are pregnant or have a newborn baby, if you are experiencing some major stress in your own home or your personal life, or you have recently experienced the death of a child or a significant other, or if you or your children are experiencing some troubled times that need your attention. Why do you think we state that, that it probably would be best for you to wait? Can't Anyone? Focus on the child. We state that because most of the children entering into the child welfare system have experienced some type of trauma. And so we do not want to place a child in a home that's experiencing major stress because that will add to their trauma. So again, please make sure that you just take an honest look at your family. And if you're experiencing some difficult um, time, going through a difficult time, to, it probably would be best for you to wait to pursue foster care. Did you skip a slide? Okay. So qualities in which we're looking for in foster parents is that you have patience, um, not only patience with the child, but patience with the child welfare system. This system is a huge system and so it could be overwhelming at times and just um, being patient throughout this process, making sure that you're working with your licensor and also the um, placing worker to meet the needs of the child. We want you to be nurturing, uh, nurturing to the child, nurturing, um, you know, um, treating the child like they were your own to be flexible, flexible with the child, flexible with human services. Um, your schedule is going to change on multiple occasions, whether it's meeting the needs of the child through therapeutic supports, medical appointments, uh, school meetings, as well as meeting with your licensor, placing worker, um, guardian ad litem, and so forth. So you're gonna have to have good time management skills. Um, being supportive not only to the child, but also to the birth parent. Being supportive to assist the birth parent or serve as a mentor to the birth parent. 
um, letting them know how their child is doing while they're in placement, um, reassuring the child that it's not their fault that they're in foster care, being accepting and understanding of the child's history, as well as understanding um, the birth parent's history. Birth parents are going through um, some challenges in their life, whether it's chemical dependency or mental health concerns, um, just making sure that you're understanding. Caring and giving, you're going to give a lot of yourself while providing foster care um, and making sure that um, that exudes also to the children that you're providing care for. Just like you would provide care to your own child, we would expect you to do that as well to a foster child. Um, you will be a team player. There will be several um, professionals coming to meet with you um, in your home on multiple occasions. You're gonna be part of a team. So we would want you to respect and work very closely to everyone involved with the child's care. Changes in adjustments, um, privacy. Once you become a foster parent, you no longer have privacy. You will have uh, members of the community, family members. Um, everyone's gonna wanna know your business. Why and who is this child in your care? And your answer will definitely be none of your business simply because of um, HIPAA laws. So just keep in mind that you cannot go against HIPAA laws when um, discussing the child in your care. Once you become a foster parent, you are a public parent. That means everyone is watching you, okay? Uh, that means you may be shopping at Target and you may have a child who's two years old and experiencing the terrible twos and you get frustrated and upset and you may happen to shake the child or hit the child. If someone happens to see that, they definitely can report um, you know, physical or emotional abuse. So keep in mind, you are a public parent. Time management, your time is not your own <laughs> when you begin this foster care process. There will be multiple meetings, like I stated before, um, you'll be having meetings at the school and so forth. Um, cultural issues, if you decide to take a child that's outside of your race, we definitely want to make sure that you get as much information as you can on the child's history, their culture, their likes, their dislikes, um, to do some research, um, especially on either the Native American community, Latino community, African American community, vice versa. We just want to make sure that you're equipped. Um, family values and rules, you'll find out that once a child is placed with you, um, we would want you to hold off in setting your values and rules until the child becomes accustomed to your home. Um, some children that enter the child welfare system, they're used to, you know, going to sleep at midnight or they may be used to not having dinner at five o'clock in the evening. They're not used to having um, a healthy meal. Some may be used to just eating chips and a Pepsi. So again, just taking cues from that child and then being able to set your rules and your boundaries. Um, changing roles. There are times when you may have a child in your home that calls you mom and dad just from the beginning. Um, let the child feel comfortable calling you aunt, uncle, grandma, grandparent, or what have you, um, as long as they feel comfortable. Financial, you will not become rich, you will not become a millionaire doing foster care. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is a big, huge undertaking, and uh, we understand it's a lot. That's why we would definitely um, ask that you rely on your licensor to help you throughout um, this process and this adjustment. Matching homes to the needs of children. So every Wednesday, every single Wednesday, um, the licensors and our supervisors, we have a meeting, which is called our staffings. And we meet um, to go over um, placement requests that come from child protection, the adoption guardianship unit, children's mental health, 
um, and also um, possibly the correction workers or developmental uh, delayed unit. And basically they send requests because they're looking for placement um, for a child in foster care. And so when they're looking for placements, we're basically, um, there's a group of, I believe it's 13 licensors who can submit um, their foster parents' names for children that are in need of placement. And what we're looking at when we're making these matches is the skills of our foster parents, their expertise as far as parenting or mentoring is concerned, the language and culture, as well as the school district. We like to um, have children remain in the same school district so that there's some consistency. We're also looking at the characteristics of our foster homes, whether it's a single parent, two parent, if they have other children in the home. Um, we also want to make sure that foster parents are skilled enough to handle the behaviors that children may have. So those are the type of things that we look at when we're making matches. Once um, your licensor feels that um, you might be a possible family for a child, uh, we will submit your names to the placing worker and that placing worker will call you directly and ask you if you're interested in taking this child. And so that's basically um, how placements are made. Rhoda, did you want to add anything to that? No, I think that's good. Okay. So the types of foster care that we have are um, relative kinship. These are families that have relationship to the child, like we stated before, whether it's grandparents, aunt and uncles. And please keep in mind that when children come into the system, like Rhoda stated, we have two kinship workers. Their job is to find um, kin. And those kin can be either in the state of Minnesota or out state of Minnesota. So if they live in California or New Mexico, we're gonna be looking for those families. Um, traditional families, that would uh, be you all. We would consider you traditional families. Basically is that you are a member of the community, you saw a need and you wanna give back. Um, you have no relationship to the children in care. Respite families, these are licensed homes who basically give other um, providers a break. Respite occurs uh, twice a month, so it can happen, you know, from Friday to Sunday, and um, everyone is allowed to have respite. So again, um, we want you to take that break. Um, concurrent families, like Relda stated earlier, concurrent, concurrent families are families who are interested in doing foster care, but also interested in uh, being a permanency option for a child if no other relative can be found. So if you are interested in foster care on your application, you definitely want to state that you're interested in being a concurrent family. The other thing I just wanted to mention about respite, some people might, might not want to just jump in to do foster care full time, but you might be interested in saying, let's just say I want to do respite and I can pick the weekends or a week. Sometimes foster parents need to go out of town for a wedding or what have you, and they just need somebody to provide respite. Those are options too. You still have to get licensed. It's still the same requirements, but it might be it, you have more um, choices of when you want to do this and when you don't want to do it. Because you can either say, yes, I'm willing to do it on this weekend or this week, or no, I don't, I'm not going to do it. So that's other options. We're always looking for respite homes who would be willing to take kids uh, as needed. Okay. Okay. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning youth risk data. Oh, this is sort of 65% um, of 400 homeless LGBTQ youth reported having been in a child welfare placement. What we found out. Um, basically, I believe it was last year that there was an increase in homelessness because once um, youth began to state that um, they're of a different persuasion, they were basically kicked out of their um, familial home. And so they started to um, engage in risky behaviors such as substance abuse, sexual behaviors and victimization and contact with the criminal justice system. 
We also found out that 63.5% uh, students reported feeling unsafe at school because of their sexual orientation, while 43.9% felt unsafe because of their gender expression. Lesbian, gay, and bisexual youth are 190% more likely to use drugs and alcohol than their non-LGB counterparts. And so the reason why, well, why we are bringing up this data is because we want to bring awareness that we do have youth in care that also need foster homes. And so if you're interested in providing care, again, you also want to um, note tape that on your application that you're interested in providing care for lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender youth. If you decide to take these youth in your care, we definitely uh, would like for you to be available to listen, to talk about anything, to support the youth's self-expression through choices of clothing, hairstyle, friends, and room decoration. We understand that you may have family members or, or um, neighbors that may come to your home and may not be supportive of that youth. And so we definitely would like for you to advocate you know, if you feel someone is disrespectful or what have you, definitely ask that person to leave your home and that their behavior is not allowed. We want you to create a safe environment um, for that youth in your care. Um, so please keep that in mind. Also to allow the youth to participate in activities that interest them, regardless of whether these activities are stereotypically male or female. Um, to educate yourself on the history issues and resources. And please, please, please rely on your licensor or the placing worker to also provide you with um, resources if you happen to um, need some. So what do foster parents do? Number one, I cannot stress this enough, is to see the good in the child and shine a light on that on them. You want to make sure that you bring out the child's gifts and talents, especially if they're good at math or science or sports. You definitely want to um, bring that out on the, in them to take care of their daily needs just like you would take care of your own child so making sure that they receive a healthy diet that they're involved in extracurricular activities um, that you're providing the child to appropriate medical services allow a child to be a child if you're providing care for a sibling group, you may find out that there's one person in that sibling group that is parentified. You definitely will have to take time with, the, with that particular child and let them know that you are the parent and that you would like for that child to be a child. So that's one of the things that you may encounter if you're providing care for a sibling group. To help that child grow, to always provide emotional support, um, when children come into the system, they have different, different emotional um, outbursts. Some of them can be grief and sorrow. Some of that can be angry or sad or even happy. So again, you want to make sure that you provide that support to them. Uh, to keep children safe, that's the number one priority, like Rhoda had stated earlier. To mentor the birth family. Now, because you're new going through this process, we may ask that you possibly hold off on mentoring the birth family until you uh, gain more experience. But we would definitely ask that you mentor that birth um, mom or birth dad. And please note that the birth family has the right to know your telephone number so they can be in contact with you to get updates on how their child is doing. Uh, we would ask that you provide nurturing and guidance to that child um, to provide transportation. You'll find out that um, you'll be providing transportation for visitation, visitation with the birth parents, as well as visitation if they have a sibling in a separate foster home, providing transportation to medical appointments, um, provide clothing. Uh, you might um, have an instance where a child is brought to your home with just the clothes on their back. So we would ask that you provide clothing as well. To advocate for the child, advocate for the child in the public school systems, as well as advocate for the child in the child welfare system. 
communication is the key. Um, basically, like I stated previously, to treat the child like you would treat your own child. Can I just add something when we talk about that? Mm -hmm. Is literally that is what the case plan is going to provide is a roadmap as to who is going to transport the child to and from the visits, who mm -hmm. is the one that's going to supervise the visit, mm -hmm. who is the one that's going to call and make medical appointments, and who notifies the parents. That's why it's always important that the foster parent be involved and at least see the case plan that child protection has the parent sign because it does include some stuff that they may be asking you to do. So your input is always very important. Correct, correct, thank you. Um, visitation, let's talk about this. This is a heavy subject. Um, most parents have the right to visit. Visits may take place in the foster home, the county office, whether it's at um, Ramsey County on Kellogg or Ramsey County on University. Um, or in the community, just depending on the situation. Your relationship with the birth parent is very important. If you are having difficulties with the birth parent or you may not even like the birth parent, please, please, please don't exude that energy where uh, the foster child can pick up on that. Because if they feel that you do not like their birth parent, they also feel that you do not like them. Therefore, your relationship with the birth parent is very important. Uh, research tells us the better the relationship between the foster parent and the birth parent, the quicker um, reunification can happen. I just want to also inform you that the uh, current judges on the bench are ordering and requiring that visits happen three to four times a week. And so we understand that you have a busy schedule. And so this is when you're going to compromise with um, the placing worker to see if they also can provide transportation, whether it's two and then you do transportation fro or um, you know every other day or what have you. You definitely wanna be in communication with the placing worker regarding um, transportation and what visitation will look like. Like Rhoda stated, that information as well will be outlined in the case plan. Rhoda will talk about payments and clothing. Is this updated? No. Well, it runs through yes, June 30th. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get rich doing foster care um, because the way that it works, the state DHS decides the flat rate for room and board. And it's done according to the ages. You see zero to five, the monthly rate is going to be $672. Six to 12 years, $797. And for the youth 13 to 20, it's going to be 941. Every year, the DHS sets the new rates. So they will be new rates coming out June 30th, 2020. The other piece I want to talk about is clothing. Um, that is something that is given for the child and child welfare supposedly once in a lifetime. Um, I always recommend that foster parents ask the placing worker, whether it's PCU, whether it's child protection, to see if there is any money left in the clothing allowance for that child. A lot of times there may not be because it's been spent if the child was in another foster placement previously. But you can always ask and see. Um, I really recommend that you do that 
when the child comes in. Excuse me, I have a question. Mm -hmm. On that um, um, monthly stipend, does that child need to stay in your home for the, that 31 days to get the full stipend? Or how does that work? Yes. And when we talk about the stipend, when we talk about the uh, room and board rate, that's only the flat rate. That does not include having the child assessed for a higher rate. And Tally, are we going to talk about that in the MAPSI piece? No, we're not? Yes, yes, we, okay. you can. Okay. I don't know where it is on these slides. Well, and when they come up, and I'm sure they're gonna come up, um, I'll give you a better understanding of how the rates are come up, okay? Hello. 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 I still can't hear. Okay, I can hear now. I couldn't hear. Okay. Can you hear now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. My name is Vermetrius Johnson. Okay. I've been in, I just couldn't hear, so I couldn't hear uh, from the beginning. Okay. All right. Karen, you want to take this? I'm sorry. Unmute yourself. <laughs> You're on mute. Yeah. I cracked myself up. Okay, let's talk about um, the licensing process and what that looks like. So tonight okay. you're in traditional orientation training. That's part of the requirement yes. to being licensed. Yes. Uh, nuts and bolts, you'll take that meeting next. That's basically uh, the rules and regulations of foster care. Yes. You'll, re you'll receive um, paperwork um that has all the applications um in that home visits will be part of the home study process and so once you complete your paperwork and submit it to ramsey county uh, your case will be assigned by our supervisor and once your case is assigned um, your licensor will call you to schedule a visit and um, we'll start the licensing process and the home study process. We also conduct background studies. And so we conduct background studies on everyone 13 and up. Please keep in mind that if you are a couple, both of you will need to be on the application. If you have a significant other that is definitely going to be um, parenting the child, both of you need to be on the application. Um, there is a six hour pre-service training and we'll talk about what other trainings that you will need to be uh, fulfilled before you, um, here we go. So these are the training requirements that you will need to take as part of the licensing process. Everyone needs to um, take mental health. Um, that is two hours of training. And then car seat training, everyone who's providing care for a child zero to eight will need to take car seat training. Now this training is good every five years. So say if you um, happen to close out your license within two years and you come back in, that car seat training would be good. We just need to see a copy of your certificate of attendance. Um, shaken baby syndrome and abusive head trauma is required if you're providing care for a child zero to five. Again, this uh, training is good for five years, so please hold on to your certificate. Okay, so what the paperwork looks like, you'll receive the application. You definitely wanna make sure that you fill out every section clearly and concisely and to the best of your ability. Um, if you have any questions on the application, you can definitely give us a call. 
like I stated before, we do background checks. And so there is a background consent form that every member in the home 13 and up will need to complete. There will be a floor and escape plan. Uh, you will need to draw um, basically your escape plan um, that you will use in case of an emergency and there will be directions on that form. Uh, everyone 18 and over will receive an individual fact sheet. I cannot stress this enough that you need to be open and honest on this form. There are several questions on this form that ask if you have any history with the criminal justice system, uh, if you receive therapeutic services, um, that definitely needs to be notated on the form. Please keep in mind that you have to be chemically free for two years. So we do have a chemical health statement that you would have to complete. Chemical health can be alcohol, prescription drugs, or street drugs. We, we need to know that information. You will also receive an uh, autobiographical um, form that we would have you complete. Chemical health policy, I basically talked about. You'll receive the discipline policy and um, grievance policy and list of emergency numbers. All these forms, um, your licensor will discuss with you at the initial um, visit as well, especially if you have questions, okay? And when Excuse Karen, when, you, when Karen talked about the chemical health, I mean, it, we're not saying you can't drink. Mm -hmm. It just means that you couldn't um, have had any kind of chemical health issues or abuse for two years. Mm -hmm. Is that, that's correct, right, Karen? Yep, that's correct. Okay. Can I ask a Karen, question? Can I ask a question? Oops, sorry. Yes. Oh, Go sorry. Ahead. I was... Go ahead, Chiquita. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, would the background study uh, go faster for people who's already working in like DHS, like group homes or things like that already? Not necessarily. It really depends. It Because it, uh, I'm already on file with like Adam Walsh and all that because I already work with kids and things. It could. But okay. keep in mind, because you're going through the foster care um, process, if you work in the um, medical field, in the school field, we still have to do background checks pertaining to foster care. Okay. So, yeah, we do. Did anyone well, else? No, I was just saying, would you be able to locate uh, faster? Like, because, you know, my fingerprints and everything, they're updated like, every year to stay. Oh no, okay. Not really. That, that's that's the Department of Human Services background studies unit, so they do what they do. Oh okay. yeah, DHS wants to do it themselves mm -hmm. on okay. the application for foster care. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody else have a question? I thought I saw another hand. Yeah, I had a question. Um so the like the shaken baby, the SIDS, um, does that need to be a training provided by Ramsey County? Not necessarily, but it does have to meet certain criteria. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll be notified of the criteria. Yes. For that. Okay. okay. So when I had talked about the individual fact sheet and being open and honest um, in regards to um, if you had any issues with your criminal background, uh, we need to know as soon as possible. Please keep in mind that we do have some items that may disqualify you from becoming licensed to do foster care. Um, and those instances or examples can be past, remo past removal of children from the family through a substantiated abuse or neglect charge, uh, convictions of harm, especially violence against uh, vulnerable adults or vulnerable children, any drug dealing, any murders, um, any weapon charges, um, that's definitely going to disqualify you from moving forward. I ask again that you be open and honest because there are some situations that we can work with you on if you've um, committed a crime, say back in your um, teen years, we may be able to assist, um, but that's only if you tell us that this happened and that you changed your whole life around. So again, please let us know as soon as possible so that we can try and, and work with you and advocate for you. But there are some instances where we cannot help. 
Okay, so just a reminder on the paperwork that you will receive is that to, like I stated, print clearly and complete all sections. Um, there are written statements that are required for your health. Um, we need to know that you're uh, in good health um, and chemical health uh, assessment like we stated. You all will receive um, a piece of paper that basically lists the names and contact information of your local municipality. So you all would need to call the city in which you live in and basically state that your home is going to be a foster home. You need to make sure that you take down the name of the person in which you talk to as well as their um, phone number. We need that information. Um, that information will be provided to you as well. Uh, call us at 266-4123 if you have any questions or need assistance in completing the paperwork. Um, the paperwork, are you guys emailing that to us or mailing it to us? I'm gonna, hang on a second, I'm gonna stop sharing. What I was going to do, since we've never done this, usually we have folders where everybody can take a folder right now if you're interested. So oh. what I'm gonna do is at the end of this, if you are interested, we will take your name and we can email you the information. So you'll get a certificate It'll probably be coming on Monday though, and it won't come until Monday, but you get a certificate of attendance. And if you're interested, you know, you could let me know or us know here, and then I'll mark, put it marked down and we can email you out an application and the information you need to get started. Okay. One, thing, one thing I wanted to say though, I wanted to find out like, what are your questions about foster care? I mean, why are you here? What are you, what are you thinking about or what interests you in foster care? Um, for me, um, I kind of grew up, um, like, uh, my, my grandmother, uh, did foster care. So I've been exposed to, well, actually I didn't know what foster care was cause, uh, my grandmother was like, did the kinship thing for us. So she raised us, but we always had three or four foster kids in our house at a time. And I just, I kind of grew up around it. So I'm used to like, uh, diversity. We had all types of kids, different ages, uh, you know, different issues. Um, and um, I'm in the field of social work. I always have been. And um, I'm uh, pursuing uh, social work uh, for school too. So it's just, That's yeah. great. Okay. A anybody else want to say what, why you're interested in foster care? You're, if you're, okay. Well, I just, I've always been wanting to foster. I've never been, I've never had children on my own. And I just thought that it would be a good way to connect with that. Um, and I work in the ER in a hospital in St. Paul. And so I see so many kids that are being taken from adult protection. I think that I have a lot to offer. And I just think it would complete something that's missing for me to be able to do that. And I have lots of nieces and nephews that I just, I don't know, I, I love children. And so I just, I bought a big house with lots of rooms so that I can do this. That's great. Okay, thanks. Anybody else want to share? Anybody? <laughs> do you have questions? Like what kind of questions do you have about foster care? I actually have a question about your trainings that you are going to do for mental health. Okay. No, I'm actually um, a mental health practitioner since 2009. Okay. So would that, qualify so I don't have to take the two-hour training or you'd do think, you guys you'd think it would because it's pretty basic and elementary but we've had psychiatrists and doctors and they've all we all we still have it's just a DHS requirement it's going to be okay. basic super basic for you okay. um, but unfortunately I have to say yes you do have to take it <laughs> you could probably teach it with your eyes closed and blindfolded or whatever but um yeah you would okay and no do problem. you send us a 
a list of the classes when they're being held so we can pick from them? Well, what's going to happen is you'd fill out your application first, and then we would send, once we got your application, you'd get assigned a, a licensor, and then they would send you out um, a training calendar that would detail all the trainings that we have and, and what you would need to do. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, um, I, have I have a uh, question. Okay. okay. Um, how many um, training hours are required per year? Well, once you're licensed, it's 12 per year. And we provide all the, we, we will have free training for you that would meet those needs or there's need, if you wanted to do something else, you can do it, other, you know, you can get other training as well. I, I also wanted to say that Ramsey County has a, a support group that meets once a week too to help support foster care providers. So we, we're there really to support you and, and we do have a group. It's not run by Ramsey County, it's run by other people, but you're, anybody can attend that group or you can find out like get more information about it or if you wanted to attend a group, it's like I said, every Monday night from 6.30 to 8 or once a month. The thir this time it's next Monday, but it's from 6.30 to 8. And you're more than welcome to listen to see what other foster parents are going through as well if that's something uh, have, you're interested in. I have a question. It's, I guess it's kind of off the subject, but like, um, I think I'm pretty open with like the age range I'm interested in, but like if I got a, like a smaller child, cause you know, I don't, I don't have children, even though I've always been around kids and work with children, would, um, would you provide or like give us any info as to like, if we had a smaller uh, child were to, like do like CPR first aid for like you know a baby or something like that if it's a stuff like that like different training for stuff like that uh we do In not have we don't have a CPR training specifically um I don't know what do you guys want to answer that question or we really don't have anything specific around those areas if okay. you're providing wanting to provide care for an infant like we stayed at zero to five, you would have to take abuse of head trauma, car seat, and sudden infant death um, as part of the requirement. Okay, I mean, I know general CPR, but I'm, I mean, I know it's like different for like, if, like a smaller kid or something. So I was just wondering if they... No, that's not a requirement. Okay. Okay. Is there a contact person? Um, that I can reach just um, just in case I like we talk about this and we want to do this. Is there do I just respond back to the email that was sent to me, or is there a specific person I need contact? You can respond to the person um, who sent you the email, or either one of us. We can give you our numbers too. Okay. I can give you my number if you want. Okay. Um, it's, I know my name up there, it says Alicia Farrington, but my name is Tally, T-A-L-L-I, and my phone number is 651-266-4526. Okay. So, um, I mean, I've had some questions here about the classes. Um, are they all virtually? Um, right now, most some of our classes are virtual. Other classes like the mental health, some of them you can just do online at your own pace. They're on, I think they even are on our website. So if you did want to go look at the Ramsey County website, some of those classes are listed on there. But for right now, we're doing it virtually until um, the, you know, until COVID is a little better here. So. Um, I'll make a class that's not offered virtually right now, the car seat. Correct. Car seat is the only one right now. But DHS just put out, gave us a new bulletin today where some of that is actually going to be done online as well. I have a question. Okay. Um, we are wanting to do foster care, but right now we're in a one bedroom apartment. So we're planning to move. Um, should we start the process at all before we move or should we move first before we start filling anything out? I mean, it's really up to you. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what Karen and Raldo would say, but it's really up to you because so, sometimes the process can take months 
for the licensing the foster care home. If you move out of the county though, then I would say to wait because you'd have to start everything all over it, even if you moved to Minneapolis or, or Washington County. Okay, so nothing transfers then in terms not, of housing. Not really. You'd have to do your background studies over. I mean, some of the paper, the your autobiography could transfer, but everything else would have to be redone. Okay, thank you. And um, how many children per bedroom? Karen or Robin? Do you want to answer that question? Um, your licensor would have to view your bedroom as well as we do have um, a capacity statute. And so um, we would be looking at that as well. So basically if um, you're a two parent family with no kids, then definitely we can put more children in your home. However, if you have um, children of your own, your capacity will be limited. And when you're talking about bedroom space, take into consideration that if you're getting a sibling group mm -hmm. and how old that sibling group is. So it's really on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think what, what other questions do you have or does anybody else want to comment on why? Oh, okay, go ahead, Melissa. Okay. We can't hear you. I can't. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry, my computer was on mute. So we have children in our household and they're wondering if they can share their bedroom with foster children. Is it possible to mix children that are in foster care with our family? Again, that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, definitely need to know the age of your children. You also want to make sure that you're aware of foster children's needs and behaviors to make sure that they can get along and share a room. So that's um, a question and that you're going to be constantly um, having uh, conversations with your licensor about. And that will occur during the home study process. Okay, thank you. I was trying to Can I ask a question about um, daycare and what that looks like? So if you have younger kids that are going to be in daycare, what that looks like in the foster care system? Well, unfortunately, Ramsey County does not pay for child care. There are some grants out there like Think Small that, some, that can help pay for some child care expenses. Uh, but some foster parents have pretty much used most of the money that they've received from foster care to pay for daycare, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, just goes fast. But yeah, Ramsey County does not um, pay for child care. What I want to add, though, is that we gave you the basic rate. Oh, yeah. We have three assessors, MAPSI assessors in Ramsey County. And when a child would come into your home, the assessors call you, say, how's the behavior? What are the things you're doing for the child? And, you know, are you paying for daycare? Once they've completed the assessment, they have the flexibility to up the amount that you are going to be getting per month. That's why having an assessment for MAPSI which is like a difficulty of care piece is very important. Okay. And, and how far behind the placement would that start? Pardon? Um, how far in? Um, so I'm just thinking like logistically, um, you know, if you work full time and you get a younger child, like daycare is, you know, like compare daycare to an infant to like a, a three year old, four year old, there's a big difference there. Um, how far into the placement process would that evaluation, the MAPC evaluation occur? It should occur the minute or the, within the week that you got the child. Okay. okay. I want you to realize though, that the child foster care payment is always delayed one month. 
If the child was placed today in May, you would not get payment for that May placement until June. Not a lot. No. And so you'll learn more about, yeah, and you'll learn more about the rules and regulations and the MAPSI in your nuts and bolts course. We'll review that with you as well. I have a question regarding um, ages of, of kids. Is that something that you specify in your application if you feel your home would be more conducive to a certain age? And what can you, what ages can you limit that to? Is it z literally zero to five and then adolescent, then teenage, or can you kind of narrow it down more than that? Some it's people your... have literally said I want zero to 18 months. Or some okay. people say I want 10 to 12. You know, it really, it's, it's up to you. I will say, I mean, I don't know how many people are going to want babies. A lot of people, when they come into foster care, they really are looking for babies. Um, whenever we get a placement for a baby, there's probably eight other foster care providers who, you know, everybody wants the baby. So that's a very hard group to get. So we have a lot of foster parents who, when they come in, you know, they're all really excited about this. And then they want babies. And then they're, they get frustrated because a year's gone by and they still haven't had a placement because they wanted a baby. Now, I'm not saying don't pick a baby because we, you know, we always need, you know, if that's what you, your heart is, of course, do that. But you, you might need to be a little bit more patient and flexible because it, it's, it is a lot harder to get younger children. I have a question too. Are some of these placements, will it be like we get a phone call in the middle of the night? to take the children or is it during the day only or how does it work when they so usually if, if it's a shelter placement they're the ones that are usually called in the middle of the night most of the time foster parents are not called in the middle of, of the night for a placement now you could I don't want to say ever but most of the time that would be a shelter placement foster parents are usually called during the day Thanks. Sure. You guys have some good questions. How long is the average stay? Well, that's a good question. Uh, do you guys remember what that is, Relder or Karen? 12 months. 12 months. 12, about a year? Relder's, I got Relder's. kicked out. Did anyone else kicked out? No. <laughs> oh, wow. Relda, what were you going to say? It how depends long is, on the individual piece. How long do people stay in foster care? It, it really meant, de depends. Some could stay in for months, years. Um, average is probably around nine months to a year. And you take into consideration that is the timelines the state has before permanency is uh, decided depending on the age of the child. A lot of times it is not written in stone and you can have a child that could be in foster care two years, a year and a half, all depending on the circumstances. That's why they have court hearings every 90 days to make sure things are moving along for that child. Um, I have a question. If you are both working parents and the summer, the child is not going to school. Um, are they allowed to be home or do they need supervision all the time? It just really depends on the age of the child and then what their, their development is, if it would be appropriate for them to be at home. It just, again, it really depends on that child. Also depends on the age of the child. So if you have, I believe it's uh, Minnesota state law that um, I believe 12 years old can stay home for a few hours. That's only a few hours. So yeah, it would depend on the child and depend on the circumstances. Okay. Can I ask a question? Um, 
since you said like we're doing like once you become foster parents, you're public parents. Um, let's say you had like an older an older kid, like ten or eleven, and they've been in your house for a while, and maybe they express some interest in like soccer or football or something. Would that be something then we'd have to communicate with the social worker and their parents, or uh, is it, you know, or is it just okay? You will learn, you will take a class called Prudent Parenting, and basically we want children in foster care to quote unquote have a normal life. And so we would expect you to get the children involved in extracurricular activities. Of course, you want to definitely um, let the placing worker know that this is what your intention is. And sometimes um, the placing worker may have the ability to have funds to pay, to pay for those extracurricular activities. So that definitely is something that we would want you to involve the child in. Okay. Okay. I didn't know if I needed like some extra permission or something like that, you know, from like the state or whatever. So, thank you. You're on mute, Relda. <laughs> All right, that'll be covered in nuts and bolts because yeah. they'll go through that and talk about substitute caregiving. Okay. So there's another question is, um, um, what happens with relative providers is that you get licensed first. So first you get licensed and then you'd have a child with you. For relative, it's different. For relative providers, they have a child, like was placed with them all of a sudden overnight or something, and then they have to get licensed. So for traditional people, if you don't have children in the home, you have to get licensed first before you be able to have any children come and stay with you in your home. Any other questions that we're having tonight? Can you just go over what the next steps are again? Sorry, we've just had a lot of information, like what's gonna happen next? Oh, absolutely. So what will happen, if you're interested before we hang up tonight, if you would just let me know um, before you hang up, you know, maybe we'll just ask you. Um, there's no pressure at all, but if you are interested, we would just get your, I'll, I'll um, have our clerk send you out uh, information and packet of paperwork that you would need to fill out. You know, get that filled out, send it back into us. You would get assigned in a work, a worker, a, a licensor who would come out and meet with you and talk to you about what the process is and, and guide you step by step until you got licensed. But the first step would be, you know, taking this class tonight was number one. Then if you're interested, we'll send you out the packet of information, filling that out, getting that back to us, and then you'd get assigned a worker who would take you the next step. Okay. All right. So who, I mean, and like I said, I don't know if, if you want to say this right now, um, you can, or if you don't, you don't feel comfortable, whatever, you know, you can call me back. I'm certainly happy to give you our number or call in any number, but if you are interested and you want us to send you out something, if you just want to raise your hand and I will take note that you, uh, I'll make sure that we get that to you. Okay, so hang on. I, oh, I have um, just one more question. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. Yeah. So I know we were talking, you were talking about like a lot of times the transportation is like a team effort. It can go back and forth between the social worker and the foster parent. Um, so when I fill out that the application to move forward right now, like actually just today, today is my birthday. And because of the, like the COVID-19 and everything like that, um, uh, things have been on hold. And so my, my driver license just expired today and I'm, I'm waiting to the 18th for everything to open uh, back up so I can, you know, take care of that. Would that disqualify me from moving forward? Karen, Karen or Relda, can you answer? Because I'm trying to take notes of people who are interested. 
No, that would not be a hindrance. You'll just have to show um, the licensor that you had a, a license and then you're in the process of renewing it. That's fine. We know that there are going to be some some challenges with COVID. We're, we're, we understand that. Melissa, Casey. So Melissa, Casey, you're interested, right? Okay. All right. I'm interested too. Okay. Hi, it's Stephanie Dillon. I'm interested as well. Okay. Gosh. I don't know. This isn't a very good process. I can't get it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. So I have that. I'm just going to go down the, there's Jody and Elizabeth. Where's Jody and Elizabeth? Jody and Elizabeth. I have that. Jody. Where's Jody? Oh, Jody Anders. Is she still on here? No. Okay. So then I'm going to have the bottom. Okay. I have um, Hannah. I know that. Patricia Evans. I'm all here. Okay. You, you're yeah. all in? Okay. Yeah. And then I know these people, they said they're in. And then Sky Sutherland. Are you in? Okay. Got you guys. Okay. And then Nicole. Nicole. Where are they? Nicole. Yeah, you're in. Okay. Got that. Demetrius Johnson. Because my Jamie, phone was on mute. Vermetris. Okay. Jamitris okay. Johnson. And then Casey. Yep. Yep. I got you. That's you guys. Okay. And then, yeah. Okay. Got everybody. All right. You have me? Can I ask one thing? Yes. All right. My kids, and well, I deal with a lot of Ramsey County, but I live in Hen Hennepin County. Do I have to? I wanted to. Uh, be a foster parent in Ramsey County. Do I have to change over to Hennepin? If you live in Hennepin County, you have to be licensed in Hennepin County. I can't do nothing in Ramsey County? No. Oh God, why does they keep telling me different then? Okay. Yeah, there's nothing that we can, we can't license. In okay, okay, okay. Since I can't be licensed now then, I got grandkids in Ramsey County. Okay. System. Can I go through Ramsey County system to try to be a foster parent? You'd have to get oh, licensed. You'd have to get licensed. You know, you'd have to go to Hen since they're not placed with you right now. Right. You'd have to get licensed in Hennepin County to be a placement so, option for them. Okay, so kinship and all that, I have still have to go through. Uh, Hennepin, right? Yes, because you're they're not placed with you. Okay. All right. But what okay, you can yeah. do as well is once you receive your uh, certificate of attendance tonight, okay, let Hennepin County know that you completed traditional orientation in Ramsey County, and they may be able to um, take this training, you know, and apply it to your original training. So just let them know that you did take training with us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and like I said, this, this the packets and information will not come until Monday. Okay. Did you put our name down? Because I didn't hear. Yes. Okay. Yep. I have your name down. I have oh. everybody's name. Just like basically everybody's name who's here said they would. Okay. Yeah. All right, if you don't have any other questions, that's all there is for tonight. Actually, I do have just one. Okay, so, sure. No, okay. great. So um, I deal with um, a lot of social workers now, um, and there was actually a client in particular that is in a placement right now, but they kind of asked me if I'd be interested in becoming the foster parent for this teenager, um, and I am. My question would be, I reside in Ramsey, so I get licensed in Ramsey, but I can still take a child from a different county, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. That's correct. I just be licensed where I reside. Yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Um, I have one more question too. So, um, 
if I happen to like move, would I have to do this all over? Like, um, let's say I move to like uh, West St. Paul and they consider that Dakota County, then do I have to, you know, start yes. this over? Yes, you would. So, I mean, some of the, you'd have to redo your, all the applications, all the paperwork, you'd have to redo your background study. Okay. Okay. I have a quick question. Okay. Um, so do we need two separate applications for myself and my partner, or is it just we put our both our like both of us on one application? Both would go on one application. Okay. And that's what you were that's what we would be receiving on Monday, is that what you were saying? Yes, or? we can send out a packet. Um, we'll email a packet out on Monday. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything else? Um, no. Everybody that you called in roll call is who you're sending the packages out to? Yes. Or I got your hands. Okay. If you raised your hand, I, I circled them. I, I think I have everybody. Okay. If not, do you want to write down my number? You can call me or, or uh, email the person who sent you the, the link to this. Okay. But my number is 651-266-4526. Oh, I know. This is like random. I'm sorry. I don't know why I didn't even think of to, to ask this. Uh, but before we before we potentially uh, would get a, a child, we would know like some of their health information because I do have like two puppies. Yeah. If they have like allergies or anything like that. We try to get that information as much as we have or as, uh, what we know, but it's always good to ask that. So if if, uh, if you're being asked about a child to come live with you, you know, or if a child protection worker or a placing worker is saying, hey, we have this child that we want to come to your house. You know, it's always a good idea to ask like, do you know if they're allergic to pets or get as much medical history from the placing worker as you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Please we had somebody who, we had somebody who was placed, they didn't know they were allergic to dogs and the foster care home had two dogs. So, yeah. So yeah. go ahead. So I'm sorry, Karen. No, please keep in mind, we're going to cover a lot of this information in our nuts and bolts um, class, the do's and don'ts of foster care. So we're mm -hmm. going to go into a lot of detail uh, in the next course. Okay. All right. Well, thank, All right. You. thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hey, Karen and Relda, do you have you. any other comments? No, just thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for coming. And thank you for thank your you. interest in Ramsey County foster care. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Have bye a bye. good night. Stay healthy. You too. Bye. Stay bye. healthy. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you. you. Guys too. Bye. 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 Oh my God. Just a second. Hi. Hey. You're on mute, Rhelda. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording. Oh. oh.